Hi, this is Vanessa Joy with Adorama TV and Breathe Your Passion, and this episode is going to talk about reception shooting with Bounce Flash. As a budding wedding photographer, I was not too keen on shooting with off-camera flash at receptions, and to be honest, I still don't do a lot of it. The reason being is that often during the reception, I'm called into different rooms or I have to run outside to photograph something and if I'm shooting with only off-camera flash I have to scramble to make sure that I bring light with me or get my other flash to throw it on my camera to make sure that I can get whatever shot I need outside of my off-camera flash setup. Because of all of this I use on-camera flash but bounce it for most of my reception pictures. Now doing this is not that difficult, but there are a few tricks that will help you make sure that you're bouncing your flash correctly. Number one, bounce it off lightly colored walls. This is not going to work if you are photographing a reception in a barn or somewhere that has dark wood ceilings or maybe even a color ceiling or wall that is red or an off color. What happens with a dark surface that you're bouncing off of is the light just gets absorbed into it and it doesn't reflect off, it just won't work. Or worse, the light kicks on the characteristic of the color of whatever you're bouncing it off on. So if you're bouncing it off of a dark brown wood, it tends to bounce back a little bit orange and not look so great on skin tones. Number two, when you bounce, bounce in the direction of people's faces. Now, I know if you're photographing dancing, it can move very quickly, but ideally you want to point your flash at the wall in which your subject is facing so that when it bounces back, it bounces back on the subject's face rather than on the back of their head. This will produce a much prettier light pattern on your subject's face. Number three, you can use TTL, but you'll likely have to exposure compensate. I typically shoot on TTL for bouncing my flash in receptions, but I bump up the power by plus one, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, just depending on how big the room is and how much power I need. Number four, make sure that your ISO is set a little bit on the high side. While you don't want your ISO set too high so you see a lot of green and noise in your image, you also are asking a lot of your flash and will likely be bursting it on a higher power. In order to help with this, raise your ISO so that it's a little bit higher and your flash does not have to work as hard. Number five, practice, practice, practice. Learning how to bounce flash in different scenarios can take a little bit of work and it's a skill just like any other camera skill that you're going to learn. So practice bouncing your flash at your next reception and a few more after that until you get the hang of it. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button below and I will see you next time here on Adorama TV.